Hey everybody and welcome back to the Pike Homestead. So here we are, yet another video of me tinkering with lights in the barn. Uh, so this is going to be the, the biggest uh, change to the lighting in here that we've done. Um, so far everything has just been to make what's already here work to make it functional. Uh, but now we want to actually make it better. Um, so I've got, uh, I've got four uh, light fixtures. They are four foot uh, two strip LED uh, bulbs um, and so I'm going to get those put in the ceilings here over top so spread the light out a lot because um, <clears throat> one thing you got to think about with lighting is the cone of light so not a lot of, you know unless you're really doing lighting a lot it's not necessarily something you think about like you come into your house and the lights are where they are um, you know I, know I worked for a long time in facilities so you know, that's one of the things we'd consider when either changing lights in a room or, you know, shifting their position or something like that is where does the cone of light fall? And a lot of that has to do with the position on the ceiling, away from the walls, and also the height. So I'm really limited with the height here. I mean, the ceiling is seven feet. So there's not much I can do about that, but I can kind of spread them out. And the idea is, is just to spread them out as, as far as you can you know equidistant from the walls and the ceiling and just try to get the light in the center of the room to spread out as far as it can and so that's what I'm going to be working on today um so yeah I got the the strip lights because they do throw out a large cone of light um you know because that's another thing you need to look at is the size of your light based on the area you need to light up and then also you know like the height comes in big time uh there's a time where we actually shifted some you know, again, four foot fluorescent lights up just like six inches. And it made the room unbearably bright for some people. Uh, so we had to actually lower them down again, just because all of a sudden your your cones aren't just meeting, they're overlapping. And then you're getting the brightness from both bulbs kind of hitting you. And some people were having problems working in those conditions. So that's something to think about when you're doing lights in general anywhere, is just how bright it's going to be and what's workable. Uh, so I think with what I've got, like I wanted some, you know, uh, sunlight equivalent bulbs so I've, I've got I've bought bulbs in the light you know in the the range for that um, to hit just general sunlight because again we're going to have chickens in here through the winter and we still want to try to you know keep them laying more consistently um, you know we're not expecting them to through the winter when it gets wet or when it gets cold but you know like we want to try to mimic regular daylight hours as much as possible while they're inside um, they'll still have access to outside, so they'll know what the sun is doing, but, you know, like if, if you want to keep your lane consistent, then heat and lighting are a big part of that. So, you know, we've got them in the warm barn, and now we just want to get better lighting for them. So it worked last year when we moved them from the outside coop, which was getting too cold, had no lights, no heating in it. And when we shifted them in here, after, you know, going, and it wasn't even that cold yet. I mean, we'd only just started to get frost and snow on the ground when we moved them. Uh, but they were already like the, the roosters were starting to show some signs of, of cold damage on their cones and, and, um, and their wattles and everything. So, you know, they healed up from that right away. Uh, we caught it early enough, but you know, we were just kind of playing it by ear on how they, they do with it. And the coop we had, we didn't have enough chickens in it for it to stay warm enough for them, uh, in that cold. And, you know, I think ultimately it was the best choice to bring them in here uh, because within a couple of weeks we started to get a few eggs again. Um, so we're hoping like with this changeover, I mean, they're still going to be in the same place. We're going to get the lights fixed up and then, you know, we'll be doing the heating to make it better for this, uh, for this coming winter. Uh, just a quick note before I fully get into um, putting up these lights here, I just wanted to show you what I got. So got these green watt, uh, two lamp LED strip lights. Uh, they're four feet long. Uh, so they're 4,500 lumens and they're a 5,000 K daylight color. Um, which again is, is what I was saying I wanted to do. But one thing I wanted to touch on is when you're buying bulbs, uh, it gives you a number of hours that the bulbs are rated for. Um, now what that used to mean with traditional bulbs, so incandescent, halogen, all the old style bulbs before LEDs came in was that they do a test batch. And their metrics were to put, you know, they would last for 5,000 hours on the box or something like that. Uh, there's a couple things. That's, that's rated on regular daylight usage. So 
like in an office setting, it's for the lights are on for eight hours a day while people are working in the office and then turn them off and they rest overnight. Um, and two, it's that in the test batches that they do, that 50% of the bulbs will last that long. The others don't, right? So, you know, their metrics are to be able to say that, that half of those bulbs, so you buy a box of four incandescent bulbs and they say they last for, what, 500 hours or something. Two of those bulbs will make it that long. The others won't necessarily. <laughs> and, uh, you know, right? The thing is with LEDs, uh, the metrics are actually far higher. So the testing metrics, when they do their test batches to say like these ones, they say they will last for 10,000 hours or 10 years of regular usage, which again is based off an eight hour usage day. Um, those are tested and it's not 50% that lasts that long, it's 80%. So you have a far higher amount of bulbs that, uh, that will last to that time when they're LED versus incandescent bulbs. And the bonus on LEDs is like these, I put them up, as long as they work from the get-go, they should work for you know the next 10 years or so without having anything to be changed. There's no maintenance to be done on it. Now it just means in 10 years time, I have to completely replace them. And that's acceptable, <laughs> you know, rather than, you know, on regular usage, having to replace bulbs every month or two months or something like that. It's, it's laying time. Um, so that's, that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at bulbs and what you want to be spending versus, you know, so if you're looking at the cost of what a box of LEDs for the same size and equivalent, you know, brightness and, and everything of regular bulbs. Well, the regular bulbs are cheaper, but more of those LEDs are going to last for the time they say, and generally that time is a lot longer. So there's a lot less maintenance and a lot less cost input. So while your upfront price is more expensive, long run, you're not spending as much. And you're also not using as much power, so you're saving on your power bill as well, because these are so they are a replacement for a 30 watt bulb right and they run on i think it's like 18. so yes they're they're far more um power you know friendly uh usage friendly so that allows me to put in because originally in the barn when it was built it actually had two um standard uh, I think they're T12 bulb um, fluorescent four foot lights, right? I, I took one out that was broken here. They'd already, one had already been replaced with just a standard uh, bulb socket, uh, but the other one was sitting in here broken and we pulled that out, but that's what they originally had in here. So, you know, this circuit is rated for doing two of those. I can easily get four of these in the same power usage and, uh, and do you know a lot better and get a lot brighter in here. So anyway, I'm gonna get going and start putting this stuff up. And uh, so yeah, hopefully there's a bit of knowledge there that you didn't have that you don't necessarily think about when you're lighting your house or anything like that. Or you know, it's, it's one of those things that comes up if you're doing a major reno or major changes. Maybe you might learn a bit of that from your electrician, but uh, it's it's not something that comes up a lot when you're thinking about buying bulbs or you know looking at the cost as you're sitting there in the store. So it's a thing to think about. All right.
Well, that is certainly much brighter in here. That's amazing. This is the biggest improvement we've done to the barn so far. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic. So all four lights are up. I haven't done the switch yet. I'm gonna keep working on that. Uh, when I got the call, it's time to go in for dinner. Um, so I'm gonna leave off with this for the moment and we'll come back and wire in a switch. Uh, I'll probably get to it uh, tomorrow. So anyway, uh, thanks for spending your time with me today. And, <laughs> and yeah, so I don't think I need to do any more light work in this part of the barn at least anytime soon so it's it's so much brighter and yeah especially with the door closed so you kind of see what it's like without the light coming in from outside uh definitely makes it uh yeah it's it's really good